If you want to learn how to get super fed on cane and one shot enemies just like me, I suggest you watch the video till the end. Today I'll show you how to dominate enemies and climb elo in just 20 minutes with this most broken champion in the game. By the end of this video you'll learn how to play cane like a beast and you will know how to carry every single game even if your bot goes 0 and 20. One second before we continue, 99% of you are not subscribed, this video took a lot of time to make and I would really appreciate if you could click the like button to support our content. Without much further ado, let's get back into the video. Before we discuss abilities, runes and items, I'll give you a few reasons why you need to main or at least have Kane in your champion pool. The main reason you want to pick Kane is his ability to fit into nearly any team composition due to his two forms. If you play into ranged squishy champions, blue cane is a perfect match. But if enemies are hard to kill and have lots of sustain, red cane is ideal. But we'll talk more in depth about which form to go later. Also, you can confidently first pick him in 95% of the games, because you can just change the runes and completely change the identity of the champion. Although it is possible to punish him in the higher divisions, Kane is one of the best champions to start with if you are new to the game. His playstyle is beginner friendly and it teaches you basic concepts of the game. In order to understand Kane, we must explain his abilities. Kane's passive ability, the Dark Inside, empowers his ability with bonus magic damage against champions he's recently damaged. As the game progresses, he'll need to deal enough damage to enemy champions to unlock one of his two signature forms. His Q ability, Raping Slash, lets him slash into a target direction dealing physical damage to enemies hit. Your best friend when it comes to clearing jungle camps, trust me. Blades Reach, his W ability, allows him to swing his sight dealing physical damage to enemies in a line. It's a versatile tool for poking enemies and clearing waves in the early stages of the game. This ability provides Kane with bow damage and crowd control potential. Shadow Step, Kane Z ability, grants him a burst of movement speed and the ability to walk through walls for a short duration of time. Or as some people might say, the most broken ability in the game. This Shouldn't be in the game, you can't walk to the walls. Yeah, I agree with you, it's kinda broken. It's a crucial tool for maneuvering around the map and setting up the plays. The walls doesn't exist anymore because I can just come out of the wall and gank bot lane, double kill, easy. Really broken ability, I agree with you. Lastly, Umbral Trespass, his ultimate ability, allows him to get into an enemy champion dealing damage and becoming untargetable during the dash. It's a powerful tool for securing kills or escaping dangerous situations. As the game progresses, if Kane hits ranged champions, he transforms into one of two specialized forms. Blow Kane, the Shadow Assassin. In his Shadow Assassin form, Kane's abilities are optimized for bursting down squishy targets with devastating precision. His passive empowers his abilities with bonus physical damage against enemy champions he's recently damaged. Reaping Slash transforms into a swift dash, allowing Kane to quickly engage and burst down nearby enemies with more physical damage. Blade's Reach becomes a fast moving blade that not only deals damage but also slows enemies hit, providing crowd control and chase potential. It deals crazy damage when you build some items. Shadow Step gains increased mobility and utility, allowing Kane to navigate teamfights with ease and swiftly close the gap on priority targets. Also, Cooldown is really low, so you can go through the walls as much as you want. Literally, it goes from 20 seconds on the base cane to like 6 seconds or 7 seconds. Probably the biggest power spike on blue cane. That's why blue cane snowballs this good. By the way, later in this video, I'll show you set of runes that I like to use that help me get on the map as fast as possible. And lastly, Umbral Trespass retains its core functionality, enabling cane to get into an enemy champion, dealing massive damage and becoming untargetable during the dash. The main difference is that Blue King has much bigger range when exiting the target. Now, let's move to the Red King, also known as the Dark King or Rust. Upon transformation, Kane's abilities shift to focus on sustain and crowd control. His passive, the Dark King Sight, grants bonus magic damage against enemy champions he's recently damaged, enhancing his sustain and dueling capabilities. Reaping Slash he still remains in slashing motion, dealing physical damage and healing for a percentage of the damage dealt to champions. Blade's Reach transforms into a powerful swing of his sight, dealing physical damage and stunning enemies hit. Additionally, hitting a champion grants Kane a portion of his maximum health, making his sustain in teamfights insane. Shadow Step is pretty much similar to the base Kane, but you'll need it much more because Red Kane is pretty slow. 
And lastly, Umbral Trespass. Retains a deadly tool for Rust, allowing him to get into an enemy champion, dealing massive damage and healing for a percentage of the target's maximum health over time. Now that we know what Kane's abilities do, we can move on to the petting in early game. Okay, when it comes to the petting, we have a few basic pets and then we'll get to the more advanced ones. In this video, I'm showing you the most basic cane pet, it's Raptor Start. You need to know this pet because it's pretty usual and pretty easy. You unlock your Q, clear the Raptors and you unlock your E second. Make sure to get through all three walls to get to the Crux and clear the Crux with your Q and auto attack. You don't use your smite here. Mm, I mean, this is not a most optimal clear, but I find it most consistent, so I use it. Finish off the small cracks with your Q and move on to the red buff. Make sure to cancel animation with your Q. It's pretty easy. Just get to the nearby wall and just Q it. You save a lot of time there and also HP. By the way, if you didn't notice, I'm doing a post commentary, so I hope you enjoy it. If you find this info useful, please like the video and support our content. Let's get back to clearing. Ok, we finish red buff, move on to the walls. We take second point in our queue and this uh, this part is a bit tricky, I'm gonna stop the video to show you. So you want to get as close as possible to this wall in order to pull this off. You want to smite the big wolf as soon as you see him and immediately basic queue him. That way all three uh, walls will be stacked so you can queue them. Look at this. One. Two, and third basic auto attack. Now we move on to the blue buff with our E and just basic blue buff three times and finish off them with Q. It seems a bit hard, but if you do it like three or four times in practice tool, it, it becomes very easy and consistent. This clear was popular last season. I'm still playing it because I like it. This clear isn't the most effective for sure, but you can search it up on YouTube if you want. But I like this one. In this scenario, I smite it twice, but you don't have to. It's pre scatter clear, so I recommend it. Okay, so second basic uh, clear is blow start. I'm doing it solo right now, but you can get leash if you want. I'd consider doing it if I have, let's say, Malphi Torn top lane or really tanky top lane that doesn't have wink on. You want to unlock your Q and basic and Q your blue buff. Next up, you want to smite your grump and pull it towards the blue buff. Q both of the targets and finish them off. The big difference here is you want to unlock your W, as you see in the video. That way the clear will be much faster and you'll save a lot of time. I won't do all 6 camps, this clear is pretty similar to the first one. It doesn't matter if you unlock third Q or E, the speeds are pretty similar, so it doesn't matter. Ok, this third clear I would say is not uh, beginner friendly, in my opinion. Because if you recently started to play this game, I think you won't catch it up. It's pretty easy uh, in terms of clearing, but macro gets kinda kinda hard later in the game if the enemy jungler decides to split the map, so I would still do the full clear uh, if I'm new to the game. But this clear is especially good if you have, let's say, trash or blitzkrank bot lane. Why? Because uh, you want to impact that lane as soon as possible and let's say the enemies are playing Misfortune and MF. You want to impact the lane as fast as possible. So you are doing 3 camp into bottling gank. By the time you finish 3 camps, bottling will be level 2 and Trash will have hook and let's say his E ability. And the gank will be pretty easy. You want to unlock your W and gank bottling. But it gets a bit tricky. If you don't get a kill and you have to back and protect your top side and let's say enemy jungler is invading you, your top lane doesn't have prior and it gets quite hard. Also you have extra longsword, so I'm pretty confident that you win any 1v1. Ok, second advanced clear is wall start. In my opinion, pretty unpredictable clear and great for platinum or emerald players. Because enemies won't expect it, trust me. The main goal with this clear is to invade enemies after clearing the walls, you have level 2 and you can invade raptors, or you can clear your jungle and gank bot lane. Similar to the last clear, but you have a bit more time to clear your jungle. Also, this pet is great if the enemies are invading your red side and you want to have a level 2 and fight 
the enemy jungler at raptors or crux. Clear is pretty simple, you just clear wolves into raptors, into red buff, into crux. And you have a choice to either gank bot lane or reset and fight for the top side with a extra longsword. Or even Doran's blade, depends on the patch and what you like to play. And the last advanced clear for this video is reverse full clear. In my opinion, a really good clear, a bit slow, but it gets the job done. I'd do this clear against the junglers that have Ignite or that want to cheese you, let's say Master Yi, Shaco, Elise, champions that like to invade and that are really strong in early game. You want to do a red buff and then go onto the blue buff immediately. You unlock your E and just clear from top to bot. This clear will leave enemies shocked and you'll have all the time in the world to gank bot lane and take the bot's cattle if you want. Make sure to go to the practice tool and master your clear. It's really important, every second matters in solo queue so don't be lazy. It takes you 15 minutes a day for like a couple of days to master a clear, literally. You don't have to be pixel perfect but I want you to clear priest cattle at least. Also, Kane is a pretty easy champion to clear on so you don't need that much time. Your main focus will be cancelling the animation on Q and using your E most optimally. Okay, so next section of this video will be runes. It will be pretty straightforward, I don't want to waste your time. Uh, when playing Blue Cane, I want you to pick Dark Harvest, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection and I like to play Relentless Hunter. You don't have to pick Relentless every game, you can switch it up if you want to, that's your personal preference. If you want to ult more, you can go Ultimate Hunter, mm, but I, I don't like it because it's nerfed. In the past, you can go uh, Ingenious, that's fine, or even Treasure Hunter if you want to. For secondary runes, uh, I like to use Boots and Cosmic Insight, because I have a lot of CDR and I don't have to buy the Boots, so yeah. For the small runes, I take two times Adaptive Force and once uh, Health based on level. I think those are the best ones, but you can try different ones if you want to. I would play these runes every single game on the Blue King. I don't like uh, Bruiser Blue King, I would say, with the Conqueror. This is the only build I play to reach Diamond or even Master Tier. And the second rune set for today. The runes I like to play on the Red King, the Conqueror setup. Pretty straightforward, Conqueror, Triumph, you can see the rest, I won't read them. Also, I want to uh, clarify one thing, you have to play Last Stand, you don't want to change it under any circumstances. Doesn't matter if you play into, let's say, mm, Team Comp that you want to play cut down for some reason. Last hand is pretty broken on Kane, so don't change it. For secondary runes, I like to use the same as the blue Kane, but you can go for the domination secondary runes if you like to, but I don't recommend it. Also, there's a 5% of the games that I like to play Dark Harvest on Red Kane because the healing got reduced a lot, so you. You should consider it if you play into team comps that you can't play blue cane, but the team comps are pretty squishy, I'd consider going to domination. If you're new to the game, these runes will be more than enough to win the game. And lastly, probably the most important thing in this video, the playstyle you want to play on cane to achieve insane win rate like I have, to achieve diamond. I know it's not pro play, challenger, grandmaster or stuff like that, but I, I know you guys too are not pro players, so... This video will be helpful, especially for Platinum Emerald players that want to climb to Diamond or even for Diamond players that want to escape to achieve Master Elo for the first time in their life. Basically, when you play Kane, you need to get your gold and XP. You don't want to just gank and get your form as soon as possible. If you don't have levels and gold, you'll fall off and you'll lose the game. The form won't matter anymore. It's fine to give some objectives, enemies will be stronger in the early game 99% of the time, so dropping one or two objectives is not a big deal. You can always play for the other side of the map. Usually you'll play for the bot lane because you'll pick the blue cane, I hope so. 95% of the games I go blue. It's just a better form in this patch and I think it's pretty good in low elo. The build that I play every game is Profane Hydra on blue cane and I follow up with Edge of Night and Cyrilda. Build is pretty simple, you can go 4th item optional, I would say opportunity, or even serpent, depends on the team comp that enemies play. If they have a lot of shields, serpent is really good, humus sometimes. I would not go GA, I think you don't need it, blue cane is an assassin with many ways to escape. 
I always go lucidity boots, doesn't matter the thing of I play against or with. Blocking must be played with them and I don't like mobility boots. Redken items are pretty much the same except you play Black Cleaver first, in my opinion. If you decide to play Red King, you'll look more to teamfight and not to just make picks and end the game. If you play it patiently, the kills will come and you'll transform. You don't want to fall off in farm, you still have to get your XP, get your gold, gank lanes and you'd have to make a play if you have level 6. It doesn't matter if you have to dive, you just have to use it. I would say it's like a lacy ult, but you have to use it. That's literally one kill for sure. That's it for this video, I've covered everything you need to know to climb with 90% of the win rate with Kane. Make sure to leave a like and comment on this video and see you in the next one.